Welcome back guys. Today we're going to look at the Trek Marlin series for 2023 in the North American kind of region or the Generation 2. So some places have got the Generation 3 set up and that is fantastic. They definitely are an improvement but most of the world has not and we are looking at those today with sale prices and everything where everything stands and what your best bet for your money is. So I've got them up on my screen here for reference and we're going to go through them Obviously with the Trek Marlin range, you start with the Marlin 4, then you go 5, 6, 7, 8, and that is the current span of it all. Throughout it, it comes from a very basic bike, which is still going to be 10 times better than your box store. And then it goes to a pretty serious mountain bike, honestly. You're getting a lot of specs there, which 5, 10 years ago would have blown most bikes out of the water. You know, compared to now today's high-end bikes, they still feel under biked but generally speaking for most people this is everything you need in a bike so the trek marlin 4 has had no changes from previous years what stands out about that one was its lower price but most importantly that one stuck with a cable disc brake so disc brakes are on all the models and this is the only one where it's cably pulled so instead of having any sort of hydraulic fluid mineral oil or any sort of hydraulic system it is simply just a cable pulling it that works so much better than rim brakes in all weather conditions disc brakes work better but you just don't get that feel and modulation that you would from a hydraulic brake that is the big improvement to the trek marlin 5. the trek marlin 4 also comes with three gears on the front and seven on the back so a nice wide range easy to use it is the shimano tawny it's kind of the go to for everyone who wants some sort of quality to it. There is cheaper and worse stuff out there, but this is not crazy high end. It will shift, it works fine. It's a lot of shifts, it's a lot of things to do, but this one, you know, honestly, you're gonna have no issue with it. As you go up to the Marlin 5 now, they're on sale across North America, especially this month, and you're getting a much better value. So you go to two gears on the front, eight on the back, it shifts significantly faster. This shifting set from Shimano just works significantly better. And if you took a test ride around a city block, you're gonna notice it very quickly. Two, they come with a hydraulic disc brake as well. So these again are gonna brake better. It's coming with a combination of still radius brakes and Tektro brakes, both good quality, they work. There's no real control changes to them but you do get better feel and modulation essentially than you would in a cable disc brake. Plus they just work better. Minor changes as well between those two models is you go from a lockout fork in the Marlin 5 with no option of that on the Marlin 4. Not a huge deal. It is a feature, but honestly, the amount of times you'd probably use that lockout fork is pretty slim anyway. So I'd focus on the fact that the braking and the shifting is better. Like I said, right now across North America, they're all on sale, the Marlin 5s, for actually cheaper than the Marlin 4s. So it's uh, uh, just a ridiculous idea to even buy a Marlin 4 at this current price point. And even for the price that they are for an extra $100, it's well worth it. It is not even really questionable. If you can spare the money, you will see the value in that very, very easily. As we go from the Marlin 5 to the 6s, where you really transition into a mountain bike. So this is gonna get a key feature which most mountain bikes have, which is one gear on the front and then a variety on the back. The Marlin 6, for example, starts with a 10 speed. So this one's got 10 simple gears, nice wide range to it. So you get very similar gear range to the Marlin 5 and 4, but in a much simpler, more off-road friendly system. So this is just gonna shift fantastically. The chain is under more tensions. So it doesn't bounce around as much. There's less chance of it falling off overall just shifts and works significantly better than any multiple on the front one uh, you know unless you're talking crazy high end from five years ago then questionable but a one by drive train just works reliably so well so simple unless you're high speed commuting and really breaking the top speed of a marlin 5 then the marlin 6 you might go mm, i might miss that very top end range but otherwise i don't think you'll miss it it is a wonderful bike I have one myself with the sale price right now as well. It's essentially the regular price of the Marlin 5. So anyone looking at an old Marlin 5 should definitely get the Marlin 6. If you look at the Marlin 4, it's now pretty good chance you should jump that gap up to the Marlin 6. So for 
sale wise this is a very strategic one by Trek that they can get out their two key models and get them out there and show the benefits of spending more on a better bike. Now braking wise and suspension wise there's no real changes there. Generally with all the Merlin 6s we've seen are Tektro but obviously it's region time and you know, parts can change when you got them in. It's a whole kerfuffle of whatever. You get hydraulic disc brakes, the suspension is the exact same too. And with all those models, you get getting aluminum rims and tubes and an XR2 tire. As we go up to the Merlin 7 now, you are getting the better suspension, better brakes, and then that same 1x10 drivetrain from the Merlin 6. So the Shimano Dior shifts great, 10 speed, great wide range. The brakes now are slightly improved to a higher quality Shimano, so they bite a little bit more. The suspension is slightly better, so it's just gonna actuate a little smoother. It's not a huge change, they're both all spring at this point, nothing fancy there, but they work better. A bit more control and modulation from the suspension where you're actually gonna design it a little bit better with the rebound control, compression control. Nothing super fancy here, but it's more. Now this one is not on sale, but overall at the price range, it's at a thousand US dollars. It's actually good value. You get a cross country race bike in a pretty comfy geometry where you're gonna be fine ripping around town, but you'll be in a good kind of rough aggressive position that if you wanted to race, drop that stem down, maybe get a little more aggressive position that way. And you're really gonna see the improvements to it, especially in the braking and the suspension. You will notice compared to the basic stuff of the Marlin 5. With these ones too, we see a mix of tires, still the XR2, sometimes a Maxxis Argent Race, so it's a little faster rolling, still great tire. And these ones are still coming with a mix of rims of a tubeless ready rim. So if you're lucky, you're getting a Covey rim from Trek or Bontrager, and this is gonna be tubeless compatible. So if you want, you can actually take out those tubes, get some higher end tires and put on a tubeless system. And that's a nice little upgrade feature. There is a select few during the pandemic when they shipped out without tubeless ready rims. So keep an eye out for that because they don't tell you that and they don't see any price changes. Honestly, it's hard to notice unless you are looking for that feature to maybe request it if you can. And the last one now we look at is the Marlin 8. The only thing it keeps the same is essentially the frame. The shifting has now go to SRAM and it's one by 12. So massive range. You are getting all the lows, all the highs you are gonna have no problem with this. This is a true 12 speed mountain bike drivetrain and you're gonna have no issues with it. It goes to a RockShox Judy fork with air, so you're actually able to customize it for your weight and add a little more rebound control when you want. So this is actually gonna perform very, very well for you. You could truly do a very good race job on this if you wanted to do a bit more cross country or even rougher trails, you're gonna perform so much better with it. The tires are all our Maxxis, Maxxis Argent Race. So, and overall it is designed for racing as opposed to just a XR2, which is a nice all purpose tire. This one is their go-to race tire and you're gonna notice it. Frame-wise on all of them, the exact same geometry, all the exact same, 100 mils front travel, all the exact same. You're just changing the quality of parts. So when you look down at them now and you see some sale price, some not, which are the best values? Right now, without a doubt, the Marlin 6 is a great value for anyone looking to trail ride. This comes with the 10 speed drivetrain and honestly will shift absolutely fantastically for anyone who's just starting out or kind of catching up from years before. Suspension is reasonable, nothing crazy high end there. Brakes are hydraulic so you get some good control. And although it doesn't have tubeless options, it's not that big of a deal. Put in a patch on a tube is not the end of the world. It's about the same as shoving a plug in it anyway. It's not a guaranteed fix. You just kind of hope for the best. The Marlin 8 is still an excellent option for people looking in that Excalibur range where you want something a little more serious, a little more action packed, a little more feature packed. This has it all and it's checking every box you'd look at. Now the only thing it doesn't have is a dropper post. They are compatible with externally routed ones around the back and then it goes internal, but it's 50-50 whether you'd want one. I think they're a great value. If you spend too much money though on a dropper post, you're looking at a Roscoe 6 line. Now it's a little slower bike, a whole different bike now, more travel. I would definitely lean towards thinking of spending a lot more and going to like an Excalibur line with that drop post included. Or honestly, the Marlin 8 is a great value even with an affordable drop post, which have came down in price. You can get that whole bike set up very well 
as an off-road machine with every feature you possibly need. Overall, I do think that any bike from Trex lineup is good right now. The Marlin 4, once it goes, the sales ends, or if they say end, the Marlin 4 is a great option for anyone who wants budget bike, and it's gonna be higher quality, better build than anything you get from a big box store. The Marlin 5 is definitely worth it, no questions. If you're questioning it, don't. It's well worth it more than the Marlin 4. The Marlin 6, you go into a more mountain bike setup. That one bike makes a noticeable difference in rougher terrain and faster speeds while pedaling off-road, trails only. Around town, mm, you might not notice it. It is very nice once you've had a one bike to just the simplicity of it, but it's not, it's not a huge deal. Marlin 7 is probably the, the odd one out. It's definitely better. It's noticeable. But is it that much better? Mm, it's kind of a fine line for me. I'm not 100% sure. The Marlin 6 is great, will work and do fantastic. The Marlin 7 is about the same definition. Technically better in a few small places, suspension and brakes, but that's not a big list of things, you know? And tubeless is 50-50. The Marlin 8 though, now you are looking at an all out trail machine. You're gonna be able to really keep this bike for a long period of time, potentially forever as a trail bike and not need any upgrades apart from a dropper post, which is the same with all of them. You're not gonna go wrong with the Marlin 8 if you're really committing to that mountain bike lifestyle. And even around town, a big benefit to the Marlin 8 is with that 12 speed, you can then actually fit a really large front chain ring on it. So you can get a very fast commuting speed and still have a reasonable pedaling speed in the low range. Hopefully this helps clear it up. The 2023's Gen 3's or Gen 2's, sorry, from the Trek Marlin lineup have been a big request. So I thought I'd just do a refresher video. Most of them have been the same for the past few years. We already see hints of, or not hints, it's straight up out in other countries, the Gen 3. So what the next lineup of the Marlins are gonna be as they wean these ones out, but it could take a couple years and there is a small chance they keep it going for another year just to keep that pricing not so high and kind of do entry level bikes with the Marlin Gen 2s and new colors and the Marlin Gen 3s and a more mountain bike stuff. If you're in North America, then there's no Gen 3s right now, so there's no point looking into them unless you wanna wait bare minimum until towards the end of the year. I actually have no idea when they're coming, so maybe it's not that far away, but I don't have any hints of it even working at a bike shop. So ask any questions down below, subscribe and check out all my other videos. Otherwise, thanks for watching and goodbye.